Oh. Hmm. Oh my golly. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. This is The Joy of Welding. Y'all have been asking a lot about Bob recently, where he is, where to find him. Well, here he is. Here's my own little happy version of Bob. And The Joy of Welding is all about diving into our Weld app community and answering the questions to those novices that are seeking guidance. Let's take a closer look at this week's question. This week's Weld app member is Max Howard 07. They've been welding for just about a week now, and they've started their TIG welding journey. There's still a lot of fundamentally things wrong that you're doing, Max, and I hope that I can help set you up for some guidance. Let's jump into that. We're gonna try to replicate everything that you have going on there, Max. We've got us some eighth inch material. I took the liberty and cut some pieces up with my Thermacut Extra Fire. I ripped and zipped, and we had a couple pieces ready to weld. It's all nice and cleaned up. You've gotta take the time to prep, Max. I noticed one good thing on those plates. They weren't clean enough. If you want a nice, shiny, pretty TIG weld, you need to weld over something nice and shiny. So that's gonna help always. I'm not sure what size filler metal that you're using, but the smaller for this type of material and this type of TIG welding, the better. Now I'm not saying you have to go down to some little, little pieces of hay or string, but a piece of 16th inch TIG wire will do wonders for this eighth inch thick material, which I believe is what you're working with. We're gonna jump over to the Typhoon 230 by Everlast and get into these machine settings. No, I was a little nosy Ned and I hopped in your comment section to see if I could help and uh, see what your situation was, Max. And you're running on a machine that just has scratch start features and none of these fancy bells and whistles that this Typhoon 230 has. And if I had it my way, Max, I'd want a machine that has high frequency start, some sort of remote, and capabilities of adjusting our waveforms so that we don't have to give her the punch right off the jump. We're gonna try to replicate all of those things today. So we're gonna turn our start amps way up, way, way up to the same amps that we're gonna actually run our beads at, which is close to 75. Typically with the remote, I'll set things higher than I need because I always have the extra if I need it, but I have full control if I use that foot pedal or remote. We don't have the luxury of the high frequency start, but luckily this Typhoon has live lift, which is a lot similar to a scratch start or just a lift arc function. That's gonna be the closest things that we can get to. We've got our pre-flow set as well. Make sure you have that gas flowing over that tungsten at the end of the weld. If you don't have a post flow for your machine, just let that gas run over for 10 seconds before you turn it off. Our gas is on. We've got our material prepped. Our machine is set. We are ready to weld. But before we get started, Max, I still see it a couple fundamental things I need you to keep in mind as we weld. One thing is, let's get that bead off to a good start by making a nice straight line. I opted to take a scribe and a square and scratching a nice, clean, straight line that I can use to follow my bead with. If we can make that first bead straight, all the rest will just be so happy. Another thing is, I don't believe that you're utilizing the amount of material that you should. We need to Practice, practice, practice it means we need to weld, 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 and get the most out of each plate. So we're gonna be going and using the overlay technique by just doing beads on plate, overlapping, even overlap. I typically like to work from the top towards myself at a bit of an angle. As I work towards, I wanna be eye level. Max, I saw you, you had your head way up here. You were looking straight down. You can't see your arc length, silly. Oh my golly goodness. That's a little happy oopsie poopsie, and I can't see a thing right now. Unlucky for us, I just splashed myself, but lucky for us, it gave me a little indication of, hey, you silly bean, you forgot to go turn your gas on. All that schmutz and all that sound, that's no good for a weld. But now, we've got our gas on, we've got a nice clean strike. <laughs> I'll be careful not to arc myself off next time. But back to our subject, you don't want your head right over top of your torch, Put your face closer to the end of your weld and get eye to eye with your weld. That's how you know that your weld and yourselves are equals. It'll respect you for that. Once you're eye to eye with your weld, that won't force your torch angle to be so far back and that arc length burning your wire or balling it up as I see in your pictures, just dropping some bombs. But for now, we're not gonna even worry about that silly little wire. What I want you to practice on is that arc length, torch angle, and just dragging a puddle, making sure we've got the nice consistent width with our travel speed, and we've got the same weld size with the arc length. Lucky for us, we have a lot of tungsten sharpened already. You're gonna wanna start that practice, Max, is sharpening 
all of your tungsten beforehand because those little accidents happen all the time. Let's go ahead and get started. We're not using any wire. We're just getting really close to our work and we're kind of judging the speed. I'm looking for a pretty small weld, trying to follow my little bit of a line. I will admit that I probably can turn up my amperage a little bit. Right now, this is pretty sluggish, and I do like my good motto, weld hot, weld fast, and blast that gas. So while I do think that that is adequate, and we're holding the right bead size, I do think we should bump up that amperage closer to 90 for this eighth inch material. Let's see how that goes. Tap, lift. That's a much puddlier puddle. And now I can give it the little bit more speed, but still maintaining that same bead size. I like to be able to have a little bit of speed. And one thing that you'll do is by using this autogenous method, which is weld without wire, you'll be able to at least practice until you get those bead size down. And you can make the same size weld from one end of the plate to the other. Make sure you take this whole hand here and you keep it behind your back because eventually you'll want to put wire in that hand and we don't want to get in the habit of holding the torch with two. I'm just drag my hand on the table if I can. One bit of practice that you might want to try is lining your hand up at the end of the plate. And what I mean by that is put your hand here, reach to your start. That way, as you move this weld across, you'll end up being nice, happy, and comfortable at the end. Instead of starting here, and then having to reach and having your angle of your torch change as you get across this plate. We're seeing here a nice, solid bead, same size, and now we can think about adding wire. When we add wire though, Max, we do have to take in consideration that this puddle is going to be a little bit hungrier for those beans. This wire is now going to be trying to feed itself a little bit too, and it's hungry. It's going to need some more beans. So it's likely we're going to need to move our amperage up. From what I can tell, I'm going to guess around 105 amps. We're going to maintain this, this torch angle, keep our head in front of it, get eye to eye with our torch, and as we move, all we're going to do is place a piece of wire, get out of the way, place a piece of wire, get out of the way. You won't need a whole bunch for this process. So just keep it nice and tight, and you should be able to make it quite a ways before having to stop and grab a little bit more. Once you get good, you'll be able to feed that wire on your own, and that'll just be a skill you develop. But for now, let's get started. We're just gonna move forward, feed a little bit of wire, move forward, feed a little bit of wire. Every time we're gonna pause, add wire, pause, add wire. We don't want to lift our weld up too high. If we start lifting an arc up just high enough, you'll notice that it's much harder to make a weld go where you want. That arc is coned out too much. We need to tighten that arc link to have a little bit better success. If we lean our torch back, we'll kind of have a similar problem. So we want to maintain that up at more or less 90 with a little bit of a kickback, more like 10 degrees, with as tight of an arc length as we can manage without touching our wire or our base material. Here we have our happy little bead, our autogenous weld, which is the bead with no filler metal, and our homogenous weld, which is our bead with filler metal. As you can see right here at the top, we were maintaining all of those good arc lengths travel speed and as we worked down, we started playing around with it. We didn't get quite the results. For what it's worth, my dear Maxi, with the settings on just straight current right off the jump and you know nothing to really adjust, you're doing just okay. Now the biggest thing to take away is we want to make sure we have the same bead size all the way across from one end of the plate to the other. That's what we want to keep in achieving. Establish that puddle, dip, 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 
dip, dip, and just continue to move. We want to try to really focus on that arc length, pointing our torch straight down with not too much of a lean back angle, and satisfying that puddle. Again, those being a lot of the crucial things that you need to remember while welding. Uh oh, we dipped our tungsten. Don't worry, these sort of things happen. But when they do, we've got to go ahead and get us a new one if we want any success. We'll go ahead and pull our tungsten out of our torch, flip it around because I like to sharpen both ends of my tungsten so that I spend less time at that bench grinder or sharpening my tungstens. One thing to note, if we're welding in any type of groove that is going to be x-rayed, we've left a nice hunk of tungsten in that puddle. What's going to end up happening is it's going to show up as a bright white shiny spot for all those inspectors to be able to see exactly how bad we made a mistake. We don't want that, so if you do know you've snapped off some tungsten, be sure to grind it out. We're going to skip over for the sake of practice and just keep welding. We're going to touch, let the gas initiate, pull away, and just like that, our tie-ins are really easy with this TIG process. The more that you see in your puddle, as a dirty floaters, as I like to call them, that tells you that your plate isn't clean enough, or maybe your wire isn't clean enough, or maybe you're still welding with a little bit of a contaminated tungsten. Sometimes it's just the nature of the beast, and it's not too bad with carbon steel. But just know, a dirty puddle typically means a dirty weld. While we try to do our best, Max, and try to replicate exactly what you were doing in class, these results will give you a good example of what you're going to get with these types of machine settings. But as we welders know that welding is just welding, unless it's welding. And there is typically a better way of doing things. I love a live lift or scratch start setup when I'm welding heavier plates and not having to worry about, you know, really precise and accurate welds. Whereas with this, our tungsten's getting a little bit dirty, a little bit messed up just from the start of the weld, not having enough pre-flow. The weld's not getting enough post-flow. The welds can be better because there is a better way to do this. If I recommend you going up in plate size, this is just fine and you're going to need a little bit more amperage and maybe even a thicker tungsten. Again, I have a great video on this process inside the weld app on having to freehand and walk the cup with TIG and that's that lay wire technique where this is a more of a dip technique. Now we're going to set this machine up so that we can get the absolute most control out of our puddle. One easy step that we can go ahead and adjust is taking this silly little number seven cup off because there's just simply not that much gas coverage coming out of it. And that will affect our weld and our tungsten quality. Switching over to a, a flooding cup is not necessary. And again, you can get the job done without this, but boy, howdy, does it help. This FUPA 12 cup is not only gonna help with the gas coverage, but it's gonna allow us to stick our tungsten out a lot farther so that we can see our puddle a little bit clearer. Again, let's go over to that machine and see if we can adjust things to make things a little easier for us. Just to reiterate, these settings are fine for what you're doing and you can get the job done. No matter what, you can still do with this no problem. But what we are gonna change, and it's more of my personal preference, we're gonna go ahead and go away from this live lift TIG. We're gonna switch back over to high frequency. That's gonna allow us to save our tungsten quite some trouble. And we're gonna use the 2T remote, but on the foot pedal settings so that we have full control over our amperage instead of giving it all the beans right at once. We're going to come up at our start amps and drop that down way lower so that again our tungsten doesn't get too affected by that aggressive start. So the lower the better in my opinion. We'll keep it at 15 there. We know we're going to need 105 amps to make the puddle we want but I'm going to give it a little extra just in case. Again, with that foot pedal, I have all the control over this. I don't need to go all the way down in order to get those 120 amps. I can't keep it a little bit modest. Now we are going to turn our post flow up. It's not likely we'll need all eight seconds, but boy, how he does your weld and tongues can love a little bit of post flow. Everything else on this machine seems all hunky dory to me. Let's get into running the bead. A couple more better settings. Now remember everyone, these aren't things that you absolutely need, but boy howdy do they sure help.
that high frequency start is going to really be nice so that you're able to ease into your foot pedal establish a puddle that you're looking for lock it in place and make your weld and when you're done you're going to be able to ease off of it allowing that post flow to cool your weld off properly and keep your tungsten free of contamination be careful though if you choke your hand around this cup and you choke your chicken too much that high frequency can jump out and grab you it's better than coffee in the morning let me tell you what let's go ahead and start welding all we're gonna do is barely barely tap that foot pedal you'll notice there's no puddle being established and that's great now we can ease in see that shiny spot get the size that we're looking for and really be able to control our heat this is going to be ideal now i can see that the puddle is getting wider and i can back off my foot pedal a little bit but not having that aggressive start from a scratch start or lift tig is wonderful to keep this tungsten nice and sharp from the jump and this flooding cup while not necessary does provide a adequate gas coverage and we're just going to continue to satisfy that puddle with our filler metal and when we're done all we're going to do is ease off our foot pedal maybe we're not finished with this weld yet but we can stop we can allow that post flow to let it cool and maybe we just need to reposition. Maybe the weld isn't finished, but we can reposition and get right back into where we were at. One other nice thing about whenever we're ready to start, we can just lift off our foot pedal and we don't have to rip off leaving all these arc strikes and arc marks all over our workpiece or our weld table because that's just poor craftsmanship. These beads are looking a little bit better with this setup. We're just gonna keep welding because I'm just having a ball with it. Start that arc, ease in, establish that puddle, start moving. Never start moving without actually getting your puddle started first. One thing you'll notice after you start getting the hang of things, you might be able to add that little bit of extra heat that you put in your foot pedal and move a little bit faster. When it comes to welding stainless steel or carbon steel, I do love my motto, weld hot, weld fast, blast the gas. Back off, allow that post flow to do its thing. Keep your hot breath away from the puddle because that's going to blow your gas coverage away and kind of just ruin the whole point of a post flow. And that should be plenty. It's looking a lot nicer. Let's keep going. Dip, 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 dip. I like some good music, maybe even a metronome, something that keeps me on beat with what I'm doing. Keep that tungsten really close to your work without dipping. Keep that torch angle more or less straight up and down. Running these overlapping beads on plate is always a great way to get started on your TIG welding journey. MIG welding, stick welding, does not matter. This is the best way to get your hand into it before moving on to a lot more challenging aspects of this process. Max, I hope this helped you today. Understand what you're doing inside that lab. Practice a lot of these techniques. Again, this is this technique of the freehand straight porch up and down dipping motion is real typical for every kind of metal that's kind of eighth inch or under. Maybe your variables are changing depending on what material you're using and the thickness. But as we get up in those plate sizes, you're going to want to actually start doing that lay wire technique. While the dipping is still an option, it's just something to consider. Remember, welding is just welding, unless it's welding. I hope you all enjoyed today's episode of The Joy of Welding. I know I did. I really want to emphasize the fact that you don't need all these fancy tools and equipment to make a good quality weld. But boy howdy does it sure help. Just be careful whenever you're welding really close to your machine as it does have some breezes put off from the fans. You don't blow that argon shielding away. Until next time everyone, see you.